Hello, many thanks for joining us once again on this platform. This is Women's Voice, where we get to look at issues affecting women and also sharing their unique stories with you, our audience. My name is Selikem Akolache Apalu, and once again, you're welcome to the show. Today on the program, it's all about discovering your potential as a woman. Many women know they can achieve more than they are achieving. They are aware that there is so much more they can give this world, and yet they hesitate either because of society, family, or fear for their reputation. So they would rather prefer to stay within the shadows and the world is robbed of their talent. Today on Women's Voice, there's a man who believes that the woman is powerful. He believes that there's a lot more than women can do. And he also believes that women can uncover their true potential of being nation builders. This program is designed to help you today as a sister, a mother, a career woman, an auntie, or a niece to discover your potential and how to use it. My guest for the show today is transformational coach Skofri Nanayao Yeboa. You're welcome. Thank you, Salikam. And it's great to have you back on the platform. It's an honor to be here once again. The last time you were here, we looked at personal branding for today's exactly. woman. And wow, that show made an impact. Yes, the feedback was awesome. So I'm very hopeful for today. We'll give up our best. Okay. You're very passionate about women building up themselves. Mm. Why? Well, first of all, I want to say a very good evening to your cherished viewers. And um, I'm, I'm hoping that we'll have the best of discussion today. When you talk about my passion for women, it stems from the fact that my understanding, orientation, and the ability to decode who a woman is fascinates me. You sit back and you look at the world we live in, and we are quick to say it's a man's world because we fall short of the ability to decode the world we live in. The world is such that anything that can receive something and get a sprout out again is feminine. Any space that allows anything to inhabit it and grow is feminine. That is why it is only a woman that can take a seed and nurture it. They are the conduit to continuity. So when you have this understanding and reality to decode who a woman is vis-a-vis -vis the world we live in, you must be fascinated. The world we live in and its purposes revolves around women, whether we like it or not. But the question is, how many are aware of this conscious reality? Is this not because society is framed in such a way that it is largely patriarchal, where we come from, the society we live in. <laughs> and that is the reality, isn't it? You see, when, when you lack the wisdom of a particular knowledge, you handle it anyhow. But when you are in deep inside of the wisdom that women are the focal point of our existence, then you are not quick to believe in the status quo that society projects. When you sell your birthright to somebody for peanut, it will be bought and you'll be trampled upon. If, if you come to our local palace, mm -hmm. when there's a difficulty in the chief's palace, the king's palace, there is never a time they say we want to go and look for the wise man. No. A bruetia. Let's go and consult the old, old lady. And we've used, they've used several terms to, 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 to classify who a woman is when it comes to decision making. But because men are mechanical beings, always craving for attention, we are always desiring to be at the forefront. But like Scoffrey, who has been able to decode this reality 
I don't, I don't struggle to contain women. So it is up to me being able to have this reality of wisdom to begin to open this up to humankind. I know a couple of few leaders out there who understand this, who are teachers, who are, who are coaches. Until you have this insight, you cannot decipher matters concerning women. Not even women themselves. Any woman who is able to decode who she is, first is wise. Just like in the, in, in the word woman, we're going to decode it. Right. W-O-M-A-N. When you take W, every woman is wise. Ask yourself, why is it that, according to scientific nomenclature of women, they think from both sides of their brain, both left and right, emotional and analytical. Men can do only one analytical finish. That is why they are able to relate to situations when a woman gives you an advice from her analytical point of view without it being distorted by her emotions. Hmm? It is intertwined with her intuitions. Pa, it clicks. It works. So it is up to every woman to ask herself, am I wise? It's not about the amount of knowledge you've acquired. It is about the right application of the knowledge you've acquired. Not for your self-interest, but for society interest. Because woman stands for the space of growth, continuity. How many women understand this? Let's center it around those who have, let's, let's look at those who are educated, read, can write, and say, okay, this is it. Right. How many are aware of this? So it takes the wise woman, like Abigail, who can stand in the gap for the husband being foolish. So that David will not extend his wrath on him. It takes a lot of wisdom. Because women are able to coordinate the two parts of their brains interchangeably when she is conscious of who she is. Right. You said that um, when you were talking about that, you said that if the emotional does not interfere, how do you get that not to happen? It is, so womanhood is like an act and act. You must tie it. If you're able to decode who a woman is, you master the living of it. So you know when to switch. And every woman's strongest strength lies in her analytical being because when she switches off her emotions, we can distort logics, critical thinking. Okay? She's able to stay in tune to reality and give the best of counsel. The moment, the, the moment, look at this, a woman can be a successful career woman. Have the homes in rooms. How is that possible? Because at the office, she plays by the rule, allowing her analytical being to take charge. When she gets home, she swap back to her emotions. And everything logical becomes emotional. You must be wise. And in the O, every woman is organized. Every woman is organized. That is why they are ambi ambidextrous. They can do about four things at a go. No man, except you are gifted, can do that. So it's a cliche that only Obako be are no elite. It's not true. The woman who is able to decode who she is will never be led to any event. Never. Because she's able to put things in place systematically. She is orderly. So until you're able to decode that, you do, you do your things anyhow. And you think being a woman is only having the bees and the ability to have a V and to give birth. That is just being a feminine. <laughs> being a woman goes beyond that. Right. So if you look at organized, mm -hmm. any woman who has that astuteness, when fixed in an organizational role, there is success. They succeed. So ask yourself, how organized you are as a woman? How organized are you? You see, when, when, when you come to, this, come to terms with this reality, you, you will find the beatitudes women are, the strength they are. It takes a woman 
to be the ladder on which a man, a man climbs up. It takes a woman to be the same ladder on which a man can be brought down. If you don't understand the power and the potential of such a being, then I don't know. Right, so you, our viewers watching, can send your comments and your questions as the discussions have just begun to 0245. 780116. You can send in your comments and your questions as we continue with the discussion. So we were decoding. We got to W A O. Yes. That is organized. Let me give an example. There was there's a woman's story in the Bible who died, and other women refused her death. She's called Dorcas. Ask yourself, what kind of woman she was she that had death? Fellow women will refuse it and content with God till God brought her back to being because she was organized. Can you imagine God choosing any lazy butt to be called Mary to give birth to the Messiah? It, it, it's not just out of the gloom. You must be somebody who is astute. It wouldn't happen that you be the mother of Buddha. It, you must be somebody who is astute. It don't have to be the, 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 the mother of, of Muhammad. You must be a woman of distinction. You must be somebody who assumes your organizational abilities. It wouldn't happen for anything. So look at the shortfalls in our society and pitch where women have failed to be women. Let's look at the mother, the empath of woman being a mother. You see, we are misconcepted to the point where until you have a child of your own, you're not called a man. But the, the job of every woman is to nurture. Whether it is your own seed or somebody's seed. That is why I said the universe itself is feminine. It's a woman. That is why you put in maize, it grows. You put in uh, what anything you put into the soil, it grows. That is who a woman is. So it behoves some women to take a stand to nurture our race. The ant robber has a mother. The president has a mother. That scientist has a mother. That whatever it is, you all, we all came through a woman. So when women stop nurturing, society is in chaos. No true woman nurtures a child and say, Corner, go a mass world and come and take care of me. The true woman will say, all that you've accumulated, if society cannot benefit of what you have become, I cannot be a mother. When we say nurturing, what do we mean? You see, let me use the biological clock of a woman in, in a pregnancy state. Nine good months journey. Look at the series of changes this woman goes through. And the joy to birth is her motivation. So she endures all this journey, the challenge that comes along to birth. That is what we mean by nurturing. Seeing every seed surviving the weathers and the storms of life. I, I'm just giving an example. Even in your own studio, if everyone is to take a stand for production, how will things be? If every f woman is to take a stand and assume the aim, the mother part of everything we are, whose child will become an unrobber? robber? Whose child will become that? Whose child will be creating chaos? The, the, the ability to connect, it is only a woman who will be far away, the child screams, and she feels the child is crying. <laughs> we, may, we don't have that. That is nurturing. The traits of, of the ability to nurture. So to, to nature means giving space for something to grow and grow well. Then we come to authentic. There is a woman in the Bible called Deborah. She was an astute judge. If you read the Bible very well, she was the only judge that had her, her office under palm ranches. You see how, how they make use of what they have around them. Look at how single mothers are able to raise their kids. It doesn't matter the number. So when it comes to being natural or nurturing, they give themselves the space of a barber sword to make sure that I see your tomorrow. I'm prepared to die for you to become what you are supposed to be. Authentic. 
This is Women's Voice. Today on the program, we're looking at discovering your potential as a woman. My guest here with me in the studio is Kofi Nanaya Oyeboa, transformational coach, and he's been walking us through the process. We'll take a break. When we return, Women's Voice will continue. You can send in those questions and comments you have to that number. Don't call. Send a text or a WhatsApp. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is Women's Voice today. It's all about discovering your potential as a woman. My guest with me in the studio is transformational coach Skofri Nanayao Yeboa. So we're still on decoding the word woman and we're at A, authentic. A, authentic. Now, any woman who understands who she is, is authentic. Let me give you a first example. She doesn't need too much makeup to believe that she is confident. She doesn't believe that having extension, her confidence is, is not embedded in having extensions of her hair. The authentic woman does not believe her beauty lies behind additional substances. She rather believes that it can rather enhance who I am. But my confidence does not lie in those additions. That is who a true woman is. Let me give you an example. There is a woman called... Florence Nightingale, who opened up a space that has become a, an age-long profession. Nursing then was, was started. It was not even called a profession or a career. But you see, every woman who is authentic does not demand for space to perform. She creates it. She didn't need to have to go to nursing school to become a nurse. She, 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 she created that space. Look at her own Madame Joyce Hai. When others will be chasing for degrees and whatever so that they will be accepted in the, in the competition ladder in the corporate world, she created space for herself. So the authentic woman creates space. For her to be able to deploy. For her to be able to nurture whatever comes her way. Look at the light she has touched. And she didn't do any of these things because of herself. Everything this woman did was for a generation. That is what it takes to be an authentic woman. It is not wanting to drive the same kind of man is driving because you think men are domineering. No, they are domineering because you nurtured them to be domineering. They don't know how. Or understand who you are as a woman. You didn't teach them. Because you yourself, you fall short of knowing who you are. So authentic women create space. Mother Teresa was a nun, never had a child. Why was she Christian with the title mother? Because she was authentic who created space to make sure humanity, the, the, the people she can reach, she took a stand. Every authentic woman must take a stand for something. Children say, okay, in, her, in, in, in blessed memory. When hockey was dwindling in this nation, this woman took a stand. This is what I'm talking about. Every authentic woman can be, re can be referred to something. As for this woman, dear. As for that woman, dear. You see, that is when you know she, she took a stand. And they don't take a stand to compete. No authentic woman competes. Because they create space for themselves. They, they assume it and leave it. They just don't go in there because they must be heard, they must be seen, they must be conspicuous. No. They come and the moment they enter the place, there's another woman called Madame Esther Koba. Oh, another fantastic woman. Corporate wise, wherever, you, wherever you, you, you fit her, you find results. She's not there to compete. So, as a woman sitting home today, watching us, ask yourself, how authentic are you? What space are you creating for yourself to function in that office of yours, in that school, in that home? What space are you creating for you to assume, master it, and leave it there? Because, because you are the mother of the universe. Whom are you competing with? Then let's come to the word N. Right. Which I say is, you, you need to be simplistic. Being natural, natural is, is being simplistic. Knowing that your sole aim of existence is not because of you. It is because of continuity. 
Your sole aim of existence is not because of what you can amass for yourself. I always thank my mom. I have two or three of them. They all play the cardinal role in my life. One will wake up, I don't pray for me. One will make sure when I go away, what she will advise me. The other one will make sure she feeds me well. They, they will see your tomorrow from afar. Now we've become so much consuming corporate because we've allowed the men to create that thing or something called corporate. That's just what the competition is. But there is no competition because you, you are the mothers of these men who created the corporate. What did you teach them about you, a woman? What example are you in the natural terms? Go to school, become a jay, come and take care of me. Go to school, become this, come and take care of me. You become the selfish centered person, and your son listens to you first in anything he does. So everything he has become is play your words. It's the same women who give birth to corrupt presidents, who give birth to corrupt leaders. Give birth to societal menace. So ask yourself, what has gone amiss? Right. People say that um, in this current world in which things are very f moving at a very fast pace, women are struggling to climb up the corporate ladder, like you're saying. Women who have families are still also career women. There's no way anyone, any woman can have it all. What's your perspective on that? <laughs> I've just explained in the definition of a woman the all means orderly. Every woman is ambidextrous, except she is lazy. Except she doesn't understand why she is a woman. Except she doesn't accept that she is a woman. Except because if you accept that you are a woman and you are embedded, you see, nature is. It's the most fascinating thing. I don't want to use the word God. But nature is the most fascinating thing that you can study. How come nature said, I will give a woman hmm, the ability to think from both sides of the brain and I'll give a man only one ability. Ask yourself, phantom it. But even women who, you know, who we see as a success say that, look, sometimes some, some aspect of your life has to give for another one too function properly and um, whilst you are at that function grand function that is honoring you mm. your children are at home mm. who is taking care of them mm. you know whilst you are dedicating all your time to this particular project seeking to help the needy your husband is there he needs you mm. so something will have to give for something else to move on how do we get it all together you see if you had said a man I would have agreed with you mm -hmm. But I'm saying it takes only a woman who doesn't understand why she's created as a woman. How do you organize your life? If you, if you focus, because any woman who, who is so corporate oriented, well, that is the excuse they will give to you. Because they don't want anything that will derail them from their competition they are pursuing. But there are successful women out there who have been able to combine all the three with the support. Tell me how I can support you to become the best you are out there so that collectively you can be that woman. Tell me. But when you come home, you don't even know how to, to nurture a man. You don't know to how to handle him. You think it's all about I love you and if there's the asset of and I love you, everything is dead gone. Pa. The, the cacophony of today's relationships. So until, un, un, until you assume that your woman's status, that is an excuse you will give. Our mothers were mothers. She will have a mini farm. She will have a small poultry farm. She will still have something to sell in the market. But she is able to connect or including the husband and the children. And you are telling me in this 21st century woman, you lack those capabilities? I'm, I'm just giving you a typical example. I'm saying go to our villages. Our mothers. Mm -hmm. She will take you to church on Sunday. Between Monday to Tuesday, there's, there's something else she will be doing. Before Saturday, we, they were able to do all this. And we who say we are so advanced and civilized, we say we cannot do all. It's lazy mindset. And this competitive mindset. 
that derails us. And the moment you set into emotion competitiveness, you will meet fierce opposition. How you have nurtured your sons, they will, they will oppose you. So how do you get it together? Being orderly. Accepting that you are... You see, self-belief unlocks your potentials. Self-love unlocks your potentials. Self-esteem unlocks. There are people who look down upon themselves to the point that if I don't have eyelashes, period, <laughs> that alone demotivates her. That alone makes her feel devalued. Such a woman, what can she achieve? It, if, it, it doesn't matter like, what you put her through. It looks like it all boils down to knowing who you are. Ah, ah, that is what I'm talking about. How do you get to discover yourself? That is what we are doing, that is what we are doing today. <laughs> you don't know how many women are watching this show right. and how they're going to be blessed by this discussion. It is going to trigger a lot of questions in a lot of women. Oh, I have become all this. I met a client who said, I have I have gone through all this, but I'm not fulfilled. Right. I've gone through all that, I'm not fulfilled. I'm doing all this, but it seems something is missing. Because you are in competition. You want to be like that, your friend. You want to be like that, your classmate. You want to be like that. No. Create your own space. And let you be the reference point when people want to talk about that thing. Mother C.J. Walker, Harriet Tubman, Mary Kay Ash, and Mother Teresa, Florence Nightingale, uh, 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 Madam Joyce Ayi, who is a living testimony, Madam Esther Koba. I can go on and on and on and on, and any of this that I've mentioned, the living ones approach them and see if you cannot feel. It's it to be as though you can touch it. If you cannot feel what I've described about the woman, they are wise, they live. In what we call, I call it wisdom. They live in the kingdom of wiseness. Okay? They are orderly. You would not find them complaining about their career versus their other responsibilities. They are mothers. They've nurtured, they've mothered so many, they've nurtured so many lives. They are authentic. You can tell. They are natural in everything they do. Right. Now, I want to come to one area. Um, you find that some women know their potential, all right? They know what they can do. Then they get there or they're on the brink of achieving the success and they retreat. Are women afraid of success? You see, women don't live, or any true woman don't live according to the human definition of success. Mm. No true woman lives her life according to the measurement of and almost all these greats were set by men, <laughs> the greats of success. <laughs> we set them. So how can you accomplish greats I have set when I don't even understand your potentials? I don't even believe in your potential because that's not what you taught me. You taught me to be a student. I know it all. So when the woman understands that she is not in competition, her success definition becomes relative. Is it not more successful to make sure your kids go through life and you see them building maybe clinics for your community? You see them building schools for your community? They take care of the needy, the vulnerable. They take a stand and they refer this woman's son. Compare that woman's glory. Like I said, Dorcas died and people refused her death. Will you die? I'm not saying physical death, but will people say, as for this woman's challenge, we will take a stand for? As for this woman's situation, we take a stand for? Sassy will party the bida. It won't happen. Do you remember the brouhaha of, of, the, of, of the hockey pitch? Named and stuff and the brouhaha? Look at how the nation rose to the defense of Madame Tudosia Oko. The nation, it was a resonation, it was a frequency, it was like some people, you have been guided at, at, with, with, with the speed. And government had no option to make sure Master, we should intervene because when it comes to things con connecting with mothers, yes, Santo was not on the battlefield, but her name is attributed to a war. That is what I'm referring to. You don't live in the definition of success of men, live in the definition of success of nature. And so how do you get to that point where 
you know who you truly are? How do you get to that point where you can tell that this is me, this is the vision I have for myself, this is my purpose, and I'm going to get that purpose? First, first of all, I've just mentioned self-love. What is your definition of your own self? Stop measuring your abilities or inabilities with that of others. Stop judging yourself. Because I wasn't good in maths, it means I'm not good enough. Because I was not vocal and eloquent in English, I'm not good enough. Because my mother sells on the market and my colleagues, their mothers are corporate women, so I'm not good enough. Things that does not give you, you see, when you speak all about yourself, your spirit stays in tune with you. And when the woman is full of herself from within, is in tune with mother nature. They touch anything and it's a blessing. So you must stop judging and, and pitching your strength against that of people. I, I, look at our 21st century woman. Everybody is trying to challenge a status quo set by men. I have set my own rules as a masculine. And you want to break it as a feminine. <laughs> it's almost equally to impossible. Even when you break it, look at how you can't celebrate. It happens that you can't even celebrate it. Because it is the domain that has been classified and defined by somebody. That has not even understand and believe that you are gifted because that's not, what, that's not what you've been teaching him all this while. So every woman must move away from self-judgment, self-belittling. You, you must find out what do you do best without struggling? What do you do best without struggling? Without feeling intimidated? And let me put this across. Every woman who will have the opportunity to have children or will not have children because your office is a space for you to occupy so that you can nurture people. The classroom, your own home, your church, your community. If you refuse to occupy a space to make sure... My mom taught me not to hate a woman. She will make sure, she, she will tell you what you are because it's because of a woman. She had every opportunity to abort me. She had every opportunity to have killed me at birth. She would have refused to chim and pa, I'm gone. So, this is what we're talking about. We must begin to nurture a new orientation, a new, a new generation. People are listening to us, people are watching us today. They are, they are, they are going through a lot of they ask themselves, whoa, so what I have been all this while, what, what, do, what do I even consider myself being all this while? And when you relax in your calm nerves, the answers will be trickling. I'm telling you, it will be trickling. If women understand how mother nature finds it so easy to knock on their doors, like I said, the intuition of a woman, don't joke with that. Don't joke with the intuition of a woman. We don't have it. It comes from in the blue moon. But women have it constantly when they don't distort the facts, the logics, the reality, and the critical reasoning with their emotions. I want to come to the issue of religion and women. Mm. Sometimes it is perceived that women do overplay religion. Um, everything, of course, is attributed to God. Everything you are is attributed to God. Mm. But when it gets to that point where you constantly have to rely on someone else, a man of God, to tell you, this is what is happening, do mm. this, do mm. this. At every point in time, you have to rely on someone else. Then you get to lose touch with your maker, yourself. Mm. Um, how do we decipher between how to stand on our own as spiritual beings, as women, rather than relying so much on what is out there? When God wanted to give humankind a Messiah, he had the option to have possessed a man to sleep with a woman and birth a Messiah. But he chose a woman, but not a man. 
Because to assess the heart and the spirit of a woman is easier than that of a man because men are full of doubt. And I always say because they are the last born of creation, the kind of access they have to God. Any woman, if she decides to take a stand, look, you see, when, when a system is controlled by men, they will make sure they put impediments in the way of women because they were not brought up to give space to women, like to, 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 to appreciate them. Check every strong and astute man of the Bible who was not once upon a time held by a woman. Take your time and decode it. The role, the role women played in every, every, the life of every great prophet, however we want to call it. But in counting their successes, we don't talk about women because they are men. They are more fixated about logics. Pa, 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 pa. But women goes with their intuition. It goes with them. So any woman, I am scared of the tears of a woman. I'm telling you, me. Aren't I, most men? Oh, no. Okay, for them, <laughs> no, not the tears of a woman because right. of they will look um, 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 quiet and and you feel sad. No, right. the tears of a woman that follows up with an in, 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 intuitive declaration. The tears of a man does no magic <laughs> for mother nature, but the tears of a woman in her heart. Hmm, and she begins to speak to herself from within. I, I, so when you start crying, I want to know what I've done first. I want to be sure that this <laughs> guy is not the one that can cause you to be able to speak to yourself with your intuitive self. <laughs> I will say sorry, quick. When a woman takes a stand and says, you've hurt me. And she makes a declaration in her tears, in her nakedness. You see, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That when women understand this mystery, they are okay. Who was able to make sure Samson will fall? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a woman. Jezebel, Delilah, are they not? When you were able, if 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 a woman does not choose to use who she are for positive, your system will tune you to do something that on is untoward. That is the power of a woman. So we have the power to either channel positivity or negativity. I told you my mom had the option to have killed me. My dad didn't have that option. When he was busily enjoying himself, he didn't even have the option of saying, I'll kill my son. It was the mother. Who saw me for nine months? Some 12 years, some 12 months. So when a woman is able to decode who she is, and I I'm saying, if our mothers... Look at the population of Ghana. If 40% assume the pain of what we've spoken about, which man will be corrupt? You don't come home with something I know your, 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 your money cannot afford. You don't come with something I know your salary cannot afford this thing. Because that's not how I brought you up. Right. So women in some circles are perceived via a certain superficial image that has been given to us. Women are wicked, they are competitive, they are jealous of each other, they bring each other down, they are petty, they are difficult. All these things women have been called. How do you walk away from such bad qualities? Or how do you walk away from not being that wicked woman everybody's pointing fingers at? We, we, we've discussed certain contests of women when she's competitive. Right. The moment you choose the part of being competitive, you don't care the toes you will step to get there because there is a measuring stick. There is a yardstick that is measuring your success. There is somebody saying that you are failed. Somebody is saying that you are worthless. Somebody is saying it, ah, it is a proof that women amounts to nothing. But when you are living a space, don't we have men who are pursuing nursing, professional nurses who are men? <laughs> Assuming Florence Metin has said that I am... I am setting a space where, or a pace where, or a measuring stick where we will know the man and the woman who is more successfulness. But that was not what she did. She blazed a trail. So ask yourself, why would somebody ask what this woman did? They, 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 we mention their names and, and we add something else. 
There are women in the media, media fraternity. Are you saying they all can be called women when they live by hype? When they are selecting anything they do. Everything they are about is for reward. No woman does anything in her authentic self for reward. No woman. No woman does anything in her authentic self for a reward that benefits her individually, selfishly. No woman. No woman who fits this discussion we are having. I'm, I'm reiterating it. No woman. That woman, the woman we're talking about that I've cited examples, imagine they've all gone low and they were looking for re rewards. You see, when you find a woman doing what she's doing and it's beautiful and it's wonderful and it is in her domain, you have no option as a man than to stand with her. Right, and with that, let me begin to take the messages we have coming in. This one says, I think it's a very good platform to encourage women to read because Jesus said, for the lack of knowledge, my people perish. Women should stop wasting money on their hair and spend a little on their mind because we become what we think. And the Bible says, but without thy mind, um, thy, what? thy mind will do nothing. Mm. That's one comment coming in from, I think, Theophilus. This one says, good afternoon, please. I missed the beginning of today's discussion. Please, I'll be glad if you could send it to, okay. Um, we'll deal with that later on. And um, this one says, I'm really blessed for today's discussion. I'm a pregnant woman who can't stand um, a little annoying thing my husband does. And what I can do is to use abusive words on him. Please help me out. Your response to that one. <laughs> well, first of all, um, we must accept that when a woman is going through this natural biological clocking, right. a lot of things happen. She is living by stories she's been told and has sunk deep into her subconsciousness. And it is even playing out without her knowing. That same thing you are going through, somebody went through and gave birth to 11 children. So imagine if that same woman who has done 11 children was to subject the husband to <laughs> this thing every time she gets pregnant. She must look at what she's about birthing. The consist. How can you keep on abusing the father of the seed in you? How then can you have the space to bless that seed? That mouth you're using, using to abuse, how can you switch it to bless that man's seed that you are holding? Does it gel? Ask yourself that. If it doesn't, the moment your brain accepts what we are talking about right now, it will surprise you. It will not suffice again because it is switching to the point where instead of you to feel annoyed, you bless the child. Don't you know that your anger affects the growth of your child? Don't you know the consistent battle between you and the father could set the child up against the father because you are able to connect every of your emotions to your child? Right. This um, comes from a pastor from uh, Ashaiman. It says, the problem nowadays is that the boarding house is killing our women. Our mothers and the church are not helping our young ladies. All we know is to go in church and pray for career and breakthrough. But the kind of training um, is to be, to be a real woman is not there. I meet so many ladies who don't even know how to cook, but they have mothers. Mothers and maids are doing all the work in the house. Your comments? <laughs> We, we've stereotyped women to say that their place is the kitchen. Right. It's a fallacy. It's false. But being a true woman, uh, the kitchen is part of your makeup. I'm Dora from Malam. It says, I'm truly blessed with today's discussion because yesterday, by this time, I was, I was wiping because I thought it was too late for, okay, I'm not sure what you meant by that, but it says, I'm happy now. Great job, GTV. We're glad to be able to make you smile today. I am Selassie. God bless you, Nana. I'm really blessed. That's for you. Oh, okay. My name is Jordan from it. Nungwa. I'm really enjoying our show. Um, it's true that the women of today are lazy. All they know is competition from their fellow women and not paying attention to their own ability. Uh, I didn't say that. They're, they're <laughs> saying it for themselves and I'm, I'm excited. I love the inspirational talk. How can you handle a man so that he will never leave your hand? 
what 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 kind of training was the man given by the mother? I said something somewhere. You can never to the single mothers. You can never hate the father of your child. It will play out in the child's life. You hate the man who gave you the seed. You but you love the seed. <laughs> I don't know how this place has a nature. You love that seed, but you hate the giver of the seed. This is not possible. It's never, it's never possible. Never is it possible. So she's, the question is that how do you get to keep a man? I'm sure that's what she's and, asked. And, and, and she, what does she know about herself? Because there are things that every man wants. Every, there is a boy in every man. Are you nursing that boy in that man? <laughs> that's the simple question. Right. Nicholas Murphy says, a very good evening to you. My observation is that I realize that most, most ladies today are not ready to be um, good women or mothers, since most of them are just uh, jumping on guys for daily bread. I want you to please advise these young <laughs> ones, by the way. I disagree <laughs> with him saying you don't need to train to be a nurse. Okay, he was saying that in context. So. Yeah, I, 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 let me talk about the something matter called submission. All right. Submission does not mean having your head down, your shoulders down, and keep on saying please. Submission means having the knowledge and the wisdom that a man is full of ego, so I will know, I will know how to turn his heart around. Right. So that is submission. So don't say oh, women don't submit. No. If they don't, even, if, if they don't assume who they are as women, they will never have the knowledge and wisdom that women are full of, men are full of ego. So this is how I must trick their heart. Right, final one. I love your show very much. God bless you all. Please tell your guest he is the best. He really knows what he's about. <laughs> I'm blessed today with your show because um, I will never lose hope. Thank you. So it's good that we are getting to bless a lot more people. Um, let me take one because a lot more are coming. This program is very, very precious to me and my wife from Kujo. Right, so that will be all for the messages. Um, your final word to women who have been watching us this evening. Yeah, I want to say thank you for tuning into this particular program and um, I can only beseech you with all mercies. Stay in tune with who you are within. All that you are out here, its real source is within and there is a conduit it connects to. Until you pay attention to what is here, you can never reach what is here. Thank you very much, Skofrin Anaya Yabwa, for being on the show. I'm honored. Once again, Skofrin Anaya Yabwa is a transformational coach and he's been here as we've been looking at discovering your potential as a woman. As we do it, this one comes from an inspirational person, a person, a woman.